Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I got uh, a TNT one card here. Axel sent this in when I was building the Pentium 2 machine because uh, we found out there was still a problem with the TNT I was supposed to use in that machine. Since then that card has been fixed. The idea then with this card was to upgrade the RAM. So it's basically like a straight TNT. 8 megabytes of RAM and 64 bit instead of the 16 megabytes and 120 bits. So I expect this to be very slow. I haven't tested it, but we're gonna do that. So the plan is to upgrade the RAM on here. Now I don't have an exact match for these ships here, and I could obviously in theory take all these ships off here because this is a dead banshee. Has some PCB damage, which is fixed, but that's not the only problem. And this ship over here is crushed. Uh, so at least uh, at least one out of the eight ships here are bad. But I expect these four up here to be perfectly fine. There's another brand. But the ships on here are very common and often used from what I can see on Banshees. So I expect these RAM ships to be compatible, so to speak. So I can take four of these put on here, is the plan. It's not exactly that easy just to put on some RAM there and voila it works. It could be, like a lot of time with the Wood 2s, that's how easy it is because everything else you need is there. Uh, but on this card we have a few problems. Uh, shouldn't be that difficult to solve, but... Uh, you can look at the back here and zoom in. So if you look in this area here, we have two resistor bridges here. So basically resistors in parallel. So one of these is uh, four resistors and it says 390 on them. So that means 39 is 39 and uh, zero zeros. So if it had said 391, that would be 390 ohms actual resistance. And we have some uh, we have empty slot there for resistor and to install there. So why I look for this is because over here we have uh, two empty slots for resistor bridges and we've got those three uh, slots here for ordinary resistors and uh, none of them are occupied like there are over here. Also we can notice here that's just uh, RP5 for that, RP6 uh, there and over here it says RP1 and RP2. So where is RP3, 4? So RP3, 4 must be somewhere. So I flipped it over. I can't uh, actually see what it says on them, but there are two bridges in there. So I looked over here. It's gonna be difficult to see, but somewhere in here, we've got one slot there, one slot there for uh, RP3 and RP4. So I'm guessing that's RP7 and 8. To actually use or to install these number chips here, we actually need to take off the heatsink, install those resistor bridges. Uh, on the back is obviously not an issue because it's readily, readily accessible, but yeah, on the front it's not. So we need to get this heatsink off here. And it's obviously glued. If we hold it in the heatsink and push a blade in, I could probably get the heatsink off. Because if I can't get the heatsink off, we cannot solder the resistor arrays and then we can't interface the memory. So yeah, that is the basic plan essentially. Get the heatsink off, add some resistor arrays here. Same thing on the back, add resistor arrays here. Then uh, take these top four memory chips here, put them on here. I think we should be able to mix. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's what I have, and I rather use donor parts. And since yeah, and we, I could put on all of them, like I said, uh, if it wasn't for that fact that this thing is broken. It's crap. Someone, I think someone stepped on it or something. This is like uh, from like e recycler, not e-waste necessarily, but yeah. From us, I think from this was from like an eBay scam or something where they sent out uh, not what was advertised. So yeah, this has been was already picked on clean from heat sinks and metal parts. That's why the PCB is damaged and the RAM is probably damaged. For parts, I don't have 39 ohm resistor arrays, but I have these 47 on this uh, Voodoo 2 PCB from an older video I did a few years ago. Uh, you can probably see it here, but someone ripped off the whole TEMU here and took most, uh, not all, but most of the pads with it and a lot of the traces. So this PCB is really difficult to repair, like it's not no point in it really. So I think we just picked parts from this card uh, for what they're missing on here. So I figure we test this, bench this, just to see how it performs. It should be really crap with the 64-bit bus and all of that. So the card is installed and we're running some uh, 3D Mark 2000 here. Uh, seems to work fine so far. I have no score yet though. We got a score of 1258, which is actually more than I figured because uh, I usually get around 2400, maybe 2500 with some overclocking. 
but it's still a really bad score obviously being around half of uh, what a TMT should be able to do so we ran with a P3700 and 923 megahertz here so I figured now we gonna take the heatsink off the card and uh, get get to some soldering so the heatsink is off like I said I put this in a vise and then I tried to get it off just pushing at the corner from the ADP seems to exist the only thing I accomplished there was uh, knocking this thing off so and then I broke up the blade so the blade is a bit shorter but what I did then because the blade was about this long I put it here and I managed to ram the tip of the blade like in like so and uh, some piece stuck out here and this was in the vise so this is taking a force so I basically took a hammer and clubbed the uh, a piece of the blade while holding this like catching this and it fell off in one little blow there it was a big hammer so <laughs> but the thing is like holding it in the heat sink and yeah getting in between there so the force goes into the heat sink not into the bga balls because then you're going to kill the card and you have to reball it which i can do but then why should i spend half a day doing that i have tested the card it works fine still Around uh, shortest startup uh, to the mark 2000. And we can uh, remove some RAM from this donor card. So it's on the hot plate, but that's not strictly needed. I uh, just prefer it. The plan here now is to clean up these pads because I'm not going to hot there on the ship, so I could probably do that. The ship is very close. We've got plastic over here, this could obviously be replaced and so on. But I think it uh, just makes more sense to solder them on. Plus, uh, you can buy ships like this for like a, about a dollar each, or you buy 10 for like 10 dollars on eBay. Or the AliExpress or something. So I think most people would buy a set of ships to do this mod or upgrade. So I think doing all this with an iron makes more sense from a, how people would go about it. So I'm just going to add some so uh, flux here. And we're going to remove this. Just so we can solder new ships flush to the PCB. <laughs> burning the connector, that's great. So I did also remove these uh, 
two caps here, 10 microfarad, 16 volts. I did uh, use the pliers. Uh, people might not like it, but with all the plastics around and everything, just seemed easier. And you can fix damage if that would have happened, and it didn't. We need some uh, resistors for the RAM, so the original ones, if you look at uh, the original card here, it says 390, which means 39 and no zeros, 39, so ideally we want that, obviously. I don't have that. Looking at this Voodoo 2 here, it has uh, 22s, for example. The thing is, when I did the Pigman mod on the Voodoo 1, uh, the the range of resistance you can use is pretty high from what I read, like anywhere from around, well, say 22 like these, probably up to 100. I have repaired the motherboard using DDR memory, and you have to be more precise with the values when you start to use fast memory. But I think for these old graphics cards, it's more important to have some resistance than none or way too much. So as long as you have a reasonable value, so probably something between 10 and 100, it seems to work as intended. So I'm just going to take these blue ones off because uh, this card, despite having traces ripped or anything, it's not corroded. It's pretty nice in condition. We're going to use this uh, card, I think. And we need four of those. So we're going to take four of those off. Let's see if we can install these uh, resistor arrays. So some flux on the pads. These are pretty easy to install with hot air. They basically flow in place if you tin the pads first. I'm gonna rotate it so you can actually see what it says on it. But I'm gonna try this with an iron because uh, yeah, I figure most people have that at home. At least if they're into soldering, uh, you will start out with an iron. So. I use my least favorite tip, but I think it might actually work for this. Suspect this one might actually be cracked. Is it? Because this is odd over here. 22 as expected. I just figured the corner looks a little bit chipped, but uh, seems fine. I think we can take this one off. I don't like it. To do that without an, uh, without hot air, I'm just gonna hold heat the whole thing up like so basically get it off the thing is if they ship they might crack the crack and then you have a not a card that doesn't work anymore and let's make sure this one doesn't seem to have any cracks in the corners because if anything cracks it's corners and it's a common problem on the Voodoo 2 that I got it off, so not in that particular occasion, but I've seen it quite a few times. It's a common problem and it causes, usually it's around the texture unit, between the memory and the texture mapping units.
think this looks better. Maybe it is slightly more crooked. The other one was almost in perfect position, but uh, I'd rather have slightly crooked, uh, not shipped. So, so we're gonna have to grab another one from the donor card, but that's fine. Better that than uh, having crap on your card. So is this one one piece? Looks fine from here. Looks like a bridge, but uh, that's also one reason I'm going over it again. I'm removing some tin of my tip now, and then I'm going over it again here. Flux helps with the sort of flow, removing the bridges, making everything nice. So the, that one is not crooked like the left one here is, but yeah, not gonna bother with the left one like that. And I can't see any cracks on the corners, so. Happy with that. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, we can do the other side. First thing to do here is to clean up these pads. So we also need to add some extra resistors here. So I'm gonna have to grab another couple of resistors plus another array since I'm almost broken more or less. So I need to install two resistors here. I could probably get the right value, so it should be probably 39, but I can get the same type. I can get the resistors of the wooded 2, similar to those 22, I think. Uh, let's install the first resistor here that we have. The array. It looks undamaged. I don't have the ideal tip for this one right now because I removed the tin from the pad, but we'll try anyway. So this tip I think is 1.2 millimeters something or 0 0.8 somewhere around the, depending on how you measure it. Uh, one of the small ones from my well there 1010 station. I don't like the tip but it actually has some uses like this. I took two resistors off the donor would do two here. So yeah, I could do this with hot air, it would be nicer, but yeah, I think I kind of do it with the dryer on. Because I expect people to do it like that more than with hot air. You can always tidy it up with hot air afterwards if uh, 
If I'd like to just to make it look better, more straight, things will throw in place then. And sit flush and so on. So yeah, maybe not the straightest job, but uh, well, if we want things to flow in place nicely and look nicer, a bit hot there, we can do that. But they will work just fine like this. So yeah, it does make a big difference visually. If that's important to you, it's up to you. The uh, reason, like I said, I kind of want to show people you don't need hot air to do everything. Uh, and also on this side here, you could easily melt the balls under the chip and make them merge. And yeah, yeah then you had to reball. So over here, like, is it worth the visual uh, if you try to look under heatsink? I don't think so. You might spend a little bit more time just getting that one less crooked. That one, I think, I mean, that's fine. That's, uh, and that one was different from the beginning, the middle one. But I'm happy with this. This will do just fine. If it works, that's more important. I don't know if you're missing anything else. I guess we can find out later. I haven't seen anything else on the images with a fully populated card. So it's kind of time to add some RAM, I think. So I have the... TNT on under a microscope here with one of the empty pads or spaces for a memory chip. So we got uh, a notch over here and we got the same on the memory chip. We should also on a memory chip have a circle Looks like the old ones. So not the same brand but both are 125 megahertz or 8 nanoseconds. I did clean these chips on the other side. I did uh, Basically, wicked them, put some flux on the backside and pull the wick from the inside out, making sure I don't have any solder sticking up. So, this is flat, and I clean them in alcohol and so on. So, they're nice and f nice. Uh, you could obviously, if you buy new ones, new old stock, you don't have to do that. So, let's uh, put some flux on the pads here. So my goal is over to center it and then when I have done that, try to take it in place. So I'm just trying to drag out of this. I didn't plan if I'm gonna do that or something else. There seems to be some crap around here.
And the flux is really just to help everything flow. That's also why I'm putting it high up because it's gonna drain down. I'm just going a little bit slower figure so the pads and retain gets uh, hot enough so we definitely have a good solder bond between pads and legs. Yep, should be the first one there. This is going to look a lot sharper and better on your monitor and then it does on my 7 inch TM panel and my crappy eyes. So any misses and stuff like that, even I'm going to see on my monitor when I'm done with this. And that's kind of funny how that works.
So yeah, that's the memory. Uh, we need to put on some caps uh, that we are missing. But other than that, we're close to being able to test it. So we need a cap there and a cap over here. But I don't actually think we need them to run the card. So I'm going to skip them for now. So we're going to try the card out here. Power is on. Save the posts. Okay, 60 megabytes. So far, so normal. That didn't look... Well, something is definitely up here. But it's promising anyway. I think we might have missed something. We have to double check uh, everything. So, with the card not working, I think I know at least one of the problems. Because we didn't put everything on that we probably need to. So, this is the R180 up here. We have these two arrays here. And the two resistors here. Just like that one. So, here's that one. We got those two over here. And then we got the arrays here. But then we got another one here. So what I'm thinking is that uh, this is R178 there. So this all ties together. Okay, let's find it. So I think R80 is also supposed to be around 33 to 39 ohms. So we're gonna put a 22 ohm there. Okay, so I think we have something floating. That or I also might not have solved one ship properly. But it's almost working, so it's interesting. The fact that it kind of went on and off the image, like almost working, that not seems to indicate something is floating and that could be a bad solder joint or a missing component like this one. It's not the only one I found that differs between the 8 and 60 megabyte version. So, can I do this one here? Then down here, I don't know if it matters, but there aren't any memberships down here, but I mean, the, the traces and stuff going here. So, this is. GPU there, so I've got memory to the left, memory to the top, and then um, obviously the ADP slot down here. So there is some uh, resistor here, it says 103, so that's 10,000. I didn't find that on a donor, so I do have a new one here. So just gonna clean that up. So that's all the ones I know about right now, but there might be more. So I just have to test it again. And yeah, and if you can't find any more, I have to check all the RAM chips so that they were sorted properly. I put the TNT into the motherboard and uh, we're using my ordinary camera because my phone died. So power should be on, I think. I'm gonna start it up. I have no heatsink obviously, so you can't run for too long. But um, the actual PCB is the main heatsink, but you need both obviously. So we should get a post, we got that before. So yeah, 16 megabytes, uh, seems correct. I don't think the BIOS matters because mine was just said 1.95e I think and on my sticker fell off, but uh, on uh, VGA Museum the sticker said 1.93. So I think the BIOS is already saying because on GeForce 4 that I did, so for no artifact, did a few years ago, you could remove and add one share of memory and it would auto detect it. I don't think the bias matters. And we're, ah, that's an error, but that's because I ran new drives and installed older ones. 
So that has nothing to do with actual cardio still me breaking windows. Uh, maybe I should have keyboard and mouse working. So that should be... But it's running now, so it's gonna get hot fast here. It's reasonably power efficient, but I'm gonna add this fan here so we can start up to the mark before it gets too toasty. Come on. Well, hit the power button in the middle of the <laughs> test. Uh, yeah. The power button was next to my uh, fan header. That's very intelligent hitting that. But we'll try again. New custom. Ah, we don't need to. We can just do benchmark. Well, it seems to be running. A little bit hitchy, but uh, it's a TNT. So, seems to be working. Should probably check for more missing stuff. And I'm sure it's the, uh, the caps I removed. Because you might as well recap the card with only two caps. I did check over all the solder joints on the RAM here. Uh, this is the first row. Probably not perfect. Uh, but, well, that's the first row. <laughs> I don't solder every day. So that's the second and so on here. I think they do look pretty good actually. So I don't think there's any problem here that we had before. And since the card now works with that uh, resistor on the back. I can't find anything else missing. Doesn't mean that there's nothing there. But it might not also be important. So We do need to put back some caps here. And I just happen to have two left of uh, 16 volt uh, 22 microfarads. So there were 10 microfarads I think originally. But it's not that. I don't care that much. I actually like to upgrade them to 22. They cost the same. Let's add some flux here. Now this is made easier with a board heater, but I'm gonna try it out. It's pretty small and this PCB didn't really suck any heat. So, new caps on. So I think I can clean the card now. So, the card is uh, out of the oven. So we need to put on a heat sink. So we have, have a decision to make here. This is the original heat sink. It's 45 by 45 millimeters and I think it's like 10 tall. I can put that on with double sided tape. Uh, I have a thermal adhesive tape. But it's expensive and it's semi-permanent. It's better than glue in terms of removing. But with the heat sink, with the heat sink off, I could actually test fit the heat sink. I have this heat sink here that I found in my stash, and I found a couple of these. Also, knew I had a 12 volt fan for another project. And uh, down here is actually like a three pin out there. So the ground in the middle, five to the left, and twelve to the right. Now this is a 12 volt fan, I think it's like 7000 RPM, so it's pretty noisy. But it starts at around 3.1 volt. So my plan is actually to run it at 5. So doing it this way means we have an easily detachable heatsink and cooling solution with paste, no glue uh, or thermal tape. So I think that's the way to go. So I have uh, this connector here. So yeah, I'm ground in the middle and uh, 5 to the left, so I want to go with uh, 5 volts. It's gonna run more than fast enough to cool this thing. Uh, it's complete overkill with 7000 RPM at 12 volts.
Ja, det är header. Det var så här action angled header. That's why the legs were so long. Så heter han Bender. Men kanske det är läst vad det här. Det var ett fytt fan. If there is any problems with its card, this is just gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Uh, now that I have a removable fan. So yeah, I do know the card posted and uh, so on. Took it out of David. But uh, I used the Bing 104 mm fan to test it. Really quickly there, before we assemble it now. So yeah, it looks like the card is basically done. So I think it turned out really well at the end there. I was a little bit worried about the memory not working properly. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. Because the thing is, when adding memory, as you saw now, we had to add a lot of components. Well, a lot, but a few. And people often ask me, like, can't you fill the empty pad sometimes on some cards? But there's a limit usually to what the GPU supports, and then you need all the Rust and Cus uh, traces to select the different banks in the memories, so you can't just throw memory at a card and uh, think it's just gonna work. Unless it's a Voodoo 2, they usually, <laughs> if you have the 8 meg version, you can usually just do that. But usually not, there's usually a little bit more work involved, and there's usually a limit to how high you can go. So sometimes card has empty slots because they're using higher density ship and they don't need, say, more than 4 or 8 instead of uh, 8 or 16. So yeah, but let's try this card out now that it is uh, completed. So the card is up and running. And it's working fine it seems. Should get a score here soon. I ran Trinmark 2000 and we got 2153 points, which is a big improvement over the 1258 I think we had before. Though I think there's something weird with this card and I don't think it's something I did, it's just how it is. So let's check here. I did set the clock to 95 and 109 there, manually. Yeah, and default for some reason is... is uh, it's default is 80 on the GPU 95 on the memory. And I actually did Google this card and I found uh, an 8 megabyte card like I have for say. And it also said... Uh, 80 megahertz GPU, it should be 95. I did install cool bits, and this is actually the second 98 hard drive I tried. This is a compact flash card, though. but it doesn't see the clocks. I could obviously enable that and restart. It's in Swedish, but anyway. But uh, I can't, Nvidia drivers can't see the clock frequency. So I think we actually need to flash the card with a new BIOS. Well, kind of, I kind of have 1.95 here. And I did uh, download uh, some BIOS when I did the other TMT card, and it's also 1.95 BIOS in there. So I did compare them. And are they the same? No, they're not the same. Even if both are version 1.95, there is a substring. We can see that at the post too. There's like some numbers and letters after the 1.95. So there are actually two different BIOSes, it seems. Uh, so probably it's like a lower clock version for the 8 megabyte card and. Uh, a higher clock version for the 16 megabyte card. So what I like to do is actually flash the new BIOS. So I did uh, dump the old one first into my TMT folder here. So it would be this one. So I could pull over the, the one I downloaded. It's also 34K. And like I said, uh, there are differences. Uh, like in the version, the date and the version string is slightly different, and then there are some differences throughout it, which is probably the clock frequencies, I hope. So I plan to flash it, and hopefully we can get the clocks up. We have booted up the computer here now, and we're gonna select safe command prompt. I used F8 to get the boot menu up in Windows here. I was thinking I should use NV4 flash, and it's an older flash program, I used that on the previous card worked. Uh, but NV for flash is uh, pretty simple because you, you just do 
this type uh, program and uh, name of the BIOS and we want uh, the 195C 0550.rom See if we break it or not I think it wrote the BIOS, so control alt delete. So another thing interesting is the top left here, we should have a different BIOS rig if this post. I might have bricked the card, but we'll find out soon enough. It doesn't scream yet, the motherboard. Oh, I got signal. Yeah, there's a different string up there now. So I'm hoping this fixes the low clocks, turns this into the actual 60 megs version. And might also fix the stupid problem with the, uh, that I can't set the clocks from NVIDIA control panel. And I found that to be the only really reliable way. Uh, you can't do it with Riva uh, Power Strip, I think, but I have prob problems with that with other card. But there could be the bias on that card. We're booting up here, so at least it didn't get bricked and I have the old bias, so uh, it's easy enough to flash back. Yeah, and it's gonna reinstall the old card when, as soon as you change anything in the bias. And so we swap the whole bias. Mm. Here on my primary Windows 98 lab disk, so I got Everest on this one. Yeah, should also tell my clock. It told me the old bias that I ran 80 on the GPU and 95 on the memory. So I think if I go here, GPU clock 90 and memory is 110. And I have newer drivers now because I tried that to see if that would work. Oh, it actually works now. That's interesting, so that fixed it. So you could actually enable the clocks here, yes. So I'm actually gonna overclock it to see if that makes any difference. And I can run stable on my older card at 106 and 116. I can go 108 and 118. Could even go 120, 110, 120 for a suicide run, or maybe even a little bit higher, but the problem is we uh, might have crashes, so. Start. Uh, this shouldn't matter, but let's check with Everest now what kind of clocks we have just to have a second source. And then 6 on the GPU, 16 on the mem, yeah. Ran through the Mark 2000 and we got a score. I estimated something in the 2300 range. And so yeah, this seems to add up with uh, my notes from the previous TNT2 card. But that's a perfectly acceptable normal score for uh, overclocked TNT card at this frequency. So yeah, 16 megs of RAM on the card now. So yeah, it says Diamond Viper 550 there. So yeah. It's working. So the card is finished. I think it turned out really nicely. So let's uh, summarize what we did here. I took some donor RAM from a Voodoo Banshee because uh, Voodoo Banshee, Voodoo 3, TNT, TNT2, probably the Mat Matrox G200 and cards like that, they tend to use the same type of RAM or even the same brand. So I don't know if it's the one over here, but I have a PDF for one of these types, uh, ranging according to the PDF from a clock frequency of 66 megahertz up to 200. That, that's pretty wide span, the same type of RAM. So they were used on a couple of generations there from 98 to 99 seems. The RAM at, at this era is still pretty stupid. Uh, so it's not like modern cards where you might have to have a specific BIOS uh, flash to your card for a specific, specific uh, set of RAM chips. And then we removed the heatsink so we could add the resistor arrays down here, two of them. I used 22 ohms instead of 39, so if you have this card and need to buy them, obviously buy what you need. Uh, but it's not that uh, exact it seems, it doesn't really seem to matter. 
it will matter in some cases. Uh, like I said, I did a motherboard where one of these were cracked and you cannot get away with the wrong ones on the EDR. You, the board worked kind of, but you, had, you couldn't run the higher speeds. So anyways, uh, we put another two here. With, uh, I think we put two resistors next to there. Yeah, and one on top of here. And I think actually one of those on the top one should be 33 ohms, but once again, we put 22 on all of these and it seems it works fine. I think you can get away anywhere from 10 to 47, maybe up to 100. Uh, just dreaming up what people have done themselves on like uh, Woody 2s and other cards from our other people when they might add more RAM, things like that. Seems to get away with things like that. On the older stuff, uh, like I said, I don't think newer stuff, later stuff is as forgiving with tolerances. So we did that. And uh, yeah, and there was uh, one component I think over here. That one, 10,000, so it says 10.3 or 103 on it. So the last one is usually, and when I come to the codes, is how many zeros you have. So 10 and then three zeros, so 10,000. So I put one there. I don't know exactly what it does. It's uh, just very close to the, the EEPROM. But it was there on this uh, the 60 megabyte version of this card and not the 8 megabytes. So I added it because it seems like it should be there. And we also changed the cap obviously here. Might as well do that while you're here. But, uh, it was fun uh, upgrading this card. I mean, almost twice the performance. Uh, if you need SMD components like SMD resistors that I took uh, from my stash for here, you can go on eBay and look, search for like SMD resistor kits. You can probably for like $20 get uh, 1500 different uh, of them and like a big variety. It's cheaper than going to Mouser and buying a book at old books. Uh, better to go to Mouser probably if you want say a hundred of some uh, one model or a thousand once you know what you need but initially when you're kind of getting started it's better to buy one of those kits and then you can see what you consume and then buy that when you order other stuff on say Mouser. So that's how I would do that and how I did it. That way you have spare resistors, spare caps. You can probably find kits for th th those resistor bridges too. Uh, otherwise you can find those on Mouser for example. Uh, they sell them to most part of the world. Pretty good price I think. I'm not sponsored or anything. Just where I got some, I bought some there. But the most I get them off dead hardware. Like we did with the Voodoo 2. And as you saw you can take kind of almost anything in some cases. So anyway, this card is done. I'm happy with it. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.